I just finished another open back banjo, this one in the middle here. I built this one to test the design I came up with for a new kind of internal resonator. I actually constructed two different internal resonators to go along with this banjo. Both of them are removable and snap in and out of the pot with magnets. This first one is a standard bacon resonator. and I made it out of cutoff scraps and the inner cylindrical tube is a segment from an 8 inch diameter drum shell. Now this next one is my new invention, a semicircular resonator. It's a simple semicircular plate, a little bit less than half the diameter of the pot, with a plate that extends down into the pot. Believe it or not, these two different resonators have almost exactly the same internal chamber volumes, or external surface areas. The internal wall of the half circle resonator is the same depth as the cylindrical drum tube in the bacon style resonator. And the bacon resonator is held in by four magnets on small brackets covered with a piece of black leather that pair up with magnets set into the base of the rim. This resonator is held in with two magnet brackets. Here you can see the magnets mounted in the inside base of the pot. This shows two of the four. There's two more on the opposite side. Now I put some sound files at the end of the video for those different resonators. So you can scan to the end and skip this next blah 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 explanatory stuff that I put in about the banjo design and my speculations about why the resonators sound different. First I'll show a little bit about this banjo. The theme of the design centers on gears and clockworks, so I guess this is a clockwork banjo. I used a gizmo called an indexer attached to my lathe to machine different layers of the rim to look like gears with different numbers of teeth. The wood I used for the geared layers is wingy, bleached with Clorox the way I described in a previous YouTube, and the wood in the non-geared layers is curly maple. The tone ring layer is bloodwood. This is a 12 inch pot four inches deep. The neck is curly maple on the sides with a thick center band of ebony to give strength. No truss rod, just uh, ebony with a big 5 8 inch carbon rod that goes along the full length uh, the, uh, the whole neck. And the scale length is uh, 24.75 inches. The fingerboard is ebony with a curly maple trim strip across the top edge. All of the inlays are actual watchworks that I got on eBay, set in and embedded with a super hard epoxy embedding resin. And notice that I tunneled the fifth string. And the, uh, the face plate is also ebony with the guts of an old pocket watch set in. Now the pig head is a bit exotic. I wanted to try out alpaca tuners and figured I could do something weird like this on a clockwork banjo. So back to the resonators. I tried out this new resonator design because I've gotten interested in how internal resonators can be used to shape the sound spectra. David Polliser recently posted the results of a really thorough study of Bacon style internal resonators on his Banjo Physics website. He shows how the partitioning of the air chambers in the banjo pot by an annular internal resonator provides a richer spectrum of coupled resonances than a simple open pot does. His work got me to thinking about alternate configurations for internal resonators that would couple different sets of resonances than a bacon annular resonator would. So the semicircular design idea came about due to my thinking about what the vibrational modes of a banjo head look like. This is a composite of three images of the back of the banjo pot. The left panel shows the pot without any resonator. The center panel shows the pot with the annular bacon style resonator, and the panel on the right shows the mounted semicircular resonator. Even though the two resonators have the same internal chamber volumes, they have very different effects on the sound spectrum. And this is due presumably to the different ways they sample the vibrational modes of the banjo head. Here's a figure from a classic article in the Journal of the Acoustical Society of America by Laurie Steffi and Thomas Moore. 
and these nine panels show the vibrational patterns of a five-string banjo head at the nine lowest resonance frequencies. When you pluck or strum a banjo, the motion patterns and the sound you get are due to a combination of these basic pattern modes. Notice that the frequencies are indicated in the lower right of each panel, and the lowest frequency pattern at 277 cycles per second is shown on the upper left panel, progressing to the higher and higher frequencies as you go across and down to the lower right at almost 2 kilohertz. In general, the higher frequency modes have peaks that are located out near the edge of the head with not much head movement in the center. And in contrast, the lower frequency modes have patterns with movements that extend into the center of the head. So here I've indicated the regions covered by a Bacon-style annular resonator with red shading. In a Bacon resonator, the area under the outer annular parts lies predominantly over the outer higher frequency pattern peaks. In particular, compare the upper left low frequency panel with the lower right high frequency panel. The Bacon resonator samples the entire area of the head that is in motion for the high frequency patterns, whereas the peak movement at the lowest mode is totally exposed through the center of the Bacon resonator hole. So in contrast, the area covered by my semicircular resonator is shown here shaded in blue, Rather than sampling the different frequency modes differentially, it covers some of all of the different vibrational pattern regions. So it makes sense that it should have some noticeably different effects on the sound. Okay, so some sound files are finally coming up next. Even though I'm losing some of my high frequency hearing, I can hear a distinct difference between the two different resonators while I'm playing the banjo but the differences don't seem to come out as clearly in the sound files I was able to get. I guess I don't have very sophisticated recording stuff. So to any builders out there, try building one of these yourself and leave me a note about how it works for you. So for each one of these sound files, I'll indicate which configuration is being used on the three panel figure with a uh, yellow circle around the particular configuration.